Hi, this is Yaroslav from sharemarch.com and today we're going to talk about web parts versus apps uh, for developers. So in the past series we talked about uh, apps versus web parts for business users. Today is a continuation, more advanced sort of uh, overview. So um, just kind of like to bridge the gap between last time's uh, screencast and this screencast. So uh, SharePoint 2013 has an app model and it, it looks very similar. Uh, you know, some of the components of the apps uh, look very similar to web parts and some of the capabilities might look uh, similar. And, uh, you know, you might there you might have some expectations towards uh, how apps behave and what you can do with apps. So the, the goal here is to show some of the differences and what you can do versus what you cannot do. So in here I have Office 3. 65 um, site here. It's a developer site uh, which you can sign up for free for your developer uh, to develop your apps. Now one of the biggest differences is that uh, uh, for apps versus uh, versus web parts is that um, for Office 365 or any online hosted solutions you cannot use uh, Office, you cannot use um, web parts that are a farm that, that basically are farm solutions you can only use sandbox solutions and there's rumors that sandbox solutions um, are deprecated they're no longer going to be supported in the future uh, i haven't heard any clear confirmation that that's the case so um, i will assume that that's not the case because that's really the only way for us to customize uh, some of the some of the functionality in the cloud so let's take a look at from the visual studio uh, scenario um, how would we create an app versus how would we create it and a web part so obviously if you've done some development in the past uh, to create the uh, SharePoint solution you would uh, uh, click on SharePoint solutions in this case we'll create a visual web part we're gonna specify uh, a local site here and make it a farm solution and click finish. So right now the solution is getting created for is being created for us. Since this is a visual web part, uh, what we will get as a part of the solution is a feature that provisions the web part definition, as well as well as we'll get the uh, a web part user control because it's a visual web part and some code behind. Um, now let's take a look at while this is still uh, taking some time, we'll take a look at uh, what it takes to actually uh, create an app. So I'm going to launch another. Um, instance of Visual Studio here and say new project. This time I'll select apps here and pick SharePoint 2013 uh, app for SharePoint uh, 2013 and click OK and I'm gonna say that this is a SharePoint hosted app. I'm gonna go back to this solution say that this is a SharePoint hosted app and uh, I wanna put it on my uh, on my cloud uh, side here on my Office 365. So while this solution is created, let's switch back to Visual Web Parts uh, again. So again, uh, we're getting um, a feature that provisions the web part. We get uh, we get the ASCX user control and the code behind. One of the biggest differences is that um, you don't in in apps uh, or in web parts here. Uh, there's this code behind and this code behind if it's a farm solution can access really any SharePoint object model right because it runs with full permissions in sandbox solutions obviously that's not the case um, you have only access to uh, things that are available within the site collection so not the whole farm of course because you don't want to affect the other tenants um, from a features uh, perspective um, you really can scope right now this feature is uh, um, is, is, is deployed to a site you can scope it to any sort of uh, level that you have access to and uh, you know in this case it provisions the web part but you can have some sort of a feature activation code here that says all right when the feature gets activated perform some some functions let's say um, you know set the master page to this master page etc etc so um, so that's th that's the solution difference now let's take a look at the uh, the app and what's different here so what we have here, we have features here, which is like you you might think, oh great, that's we have so we have a feature model here. But one thing that's different in apps, you those features cannot have uh, code behind in them. There's no code behind allowed at all in apps. So there's no you can't add the web part or class here and compile DLL, nothing like that. It's all client side. It's all HTML and JavaScript. Right, you cannot have um, uh, code behind inside your features. You could, what you could do, you can create a list here uh, in your app. Right, you can say add new list, 
and uh, that list is going to be provisioned as a part of the list or module. It'll, it'll be provisioned as a part of the new uh, feature or existing feature and it'll be provisioned no problem but no code behind allowed. There's also a couple of out-of-the-box modules that are included in the app and those are things like CSS, any images, uh, pages and scripts that you have in your app. So those, and you see some of them are already created for you by default, you just have to fill in. Those are dropped into particular locations on the, uh, on, the, on the app side. So keep in mind, each app, when it's deployed, it's deployed to its own site collection, right? So all of those artifacts, uh, pages, images, content, everything, everything here runs on its own site, uh, not on your site here, on the app side collection here. Right? That's different from web part because web part really is deployed to your particular site uh, where, you know, wherever it happens to be, right? So, um, and, and the same thing goes for features. The features that are activated here are activated on the app side, not on the site where you've added the app part, for example. And we'll take a look at what, what the difference is. So, so that's important to understand. All of the other artifacts like lists, uh, you can have inside your app. You can have a list definition with the app. It's it's very easy uh, easy to do. So um, so that's one of the major differences. Now when we go when we go ahead and uh, now I'm gonna add an app here that I already have deployed. I'm not gonna deploy. I'm not gonna create a new app right from here. I have an app already here, so I'm gonna add it to this particular page. And that app, so. You, you could see when we click insert on a ribbon, we still have a web part and app part. So web parts are web parts as, as we're used to app parts are app parts, the new app components. So in here we have a list of uh, different app parts that we can add. And you can see that I have some of them here. I'm gonna add this feedback and comments app part that I created or app that I created. And I'm gonna click save. So what happens when the app is deployed to a site, the app gets its own site collection to store its data. And in this case, my site collection here was created uh, for this particular app. Um, and uh, when I click on this link, feedback and comments, I have, um, I have I'm actually redirected to the app um, URL, to the app site collection URL. And whether you're on premises or in the cloud, It'll, it'll, you know, in the cloud on Office 365, you have no choice. They give you a new site collection for the, uh, um, for on-premises, you actually have to make that configuration. Um, so what happens here is here, here's where the features of the app get activated. And here's where the app stores its list uh, and the data in it. Um, when, when you're adding logic to your app, uh, you may think that you're adding your, like, especially if you're accessing the context of the current site, you may think that you're actually working on the site where the app part is added. And that's actually not the case. You're actually save, You're actually running within the context of the app site, right? So um, what you see, the reason why you see here this sort of an app part on this side is because this is just nothing but an iframe. This may look like a web part, but th it isn't. So. Uh, in fact, if I pull out uh, Firebug here and uh, point, you know, uh, over here and uh, in my DOM, you can actually see that this is an iframe. And what this means, because it's an iframe from another site collection, from another URL, the rule is that this, whatever is happening here, cannot touch the rest of the site. Right. So, for example, if I have some sort of interaction within the web part or within the app part here, that interaction is only going to actually run as an iframe with on on the app side. It's not really like touching anything here. So I can't like click a button here and then you know the title of this site is going to change or like some JavaScript is going to execute on the side like a content editor web part. That's the fundamental difference uh, because. Uh, iframes do not have access to the rest of the DOM if they run on a different URL. That's HTML restriction. You just you cannot go around that. Um, the reason why that's done like that is because um, if app does something bad, malicious, we can uninstall it easily. It'll disappear right from the site in a second, right? And, and all of its data gets deleted. So uh, so that's that's the fundamental difference. For web parts, if I have a web part on a page, 
naturally, you know, uh, we're all familiar with the example when you add uh, the web part to the uh, to the page, and it's a let's say content editor web part, and that content editor, editor content editor web part can um, you know execute some JavaScript and let's say hide the header here, right? So so that's that's still available, and that's a fundamental difference between um, you know an app. Uh, w one of the fundamental differences between an app and a web part, uh, the fact that it, the app part, the app is really contained versus the web part actually touches the rest of the site. So um, naturally, to deploy uh, a web part or an app, you just do the same sort of deployment from within Visual Studio. You can just hit deploy here from within uh, uh, Visual Web Part again, deploy. If you um, if you're deploying in, a, in more of an enterprise scenario, you need to give an IT administrator a solution. You also can click publish here, give them the WSP, and here uh, what gets generated is actually an app a, a, a dot app file. So so that's the major fundamental another major fundamental difference. So hopefully that kind of clears up some of the confusion, some at least some of the initial um, thoughts that you may have in, uh, about apps. Uh, as a developer. Now, important thing to, to mention about apps, because I, I said that they're very restricted and everything, but what apps can do, uh, apps can request all sorts of permissions, like accessing BCS or like search, taxonomy, right? The managed metadata uh, service, um, social. They can, they can check for some prerequisites. If at the time of the deployment, um, your app requires any of those, the user can say, yes, trust it. And then you get access to those uh, as, as an app. If if a user decides not to give you access, your app's gonna just not be installed because it's you know the user declined to give some of the necessary permissions. So you know your app is your app is restricted, but not too much. You can request access and get access to a lot of different things. But again, that still from a, from a framework perspective, you don't have access to the code behind. You don't. Uh, you you are restricted in, in that way. In fact, you already have for some of the pages here. Uh, some of the pages here, uh, you will have already like jQuery and all of the uh, necessary JavaScript logic ready for you to be able to make some of the initial uh, calls to let's say, um, you know, um, to run some of the logic on CSOM. All right, so that's that's main uh, goal for today that I wanted to achieve. Show you some of the difference between uh, apps and web parts for developers, and stick around for more details. Uh, and in the next screencast, I'll show you some of the gotchas when developing apps uh, and submitting them to marketplace.